Hey guys, this is Emerald Fire, and these are command block logic gates. There is no redstone involved. This is possible because in the newest snapshot, or 12 uh, week 38A, the newest is actually 12 week 38B, Dinnerbone added the ability for command blocks to determine to determine what your game mode is. So, using this, it can decide whether or not to teleport you to some location. This is very interesting because it's pretty much an if-then statement in Minecraft. And I figured out a way to use it to make logic gates. The way I do this is by changing the game mode from survival to creative 1 and 0 back and forth to simulate binary code. This is the most basic one. It's a knock gate. This is just a, a set input for testing. The knock gate really starts over here. But so this would uh, you would this would be your no this would be your input so this will change it to zero. See, my game mode is now zero. And this is where the knock gate really starts. This will change it back to one. That's just how a knock gate works. This is the OR gate. It checks to see if either of the inputs is one. First, it checks to see if this input is one. If it is, then it teleports it to here, which is the output. And if it's not, then it teleports it, the player, to the second input, which then teleports it to the output. Because if it's zero, then the output would be zero. And if it's one, then the output would be one, because this one is already zero. So that's game mode one. That's game mode zero. So this will yield a one. That. Now, if I turn this to zero, game mode zero. Just like the redstone wire. So I'll just change that back, or else I'll forget to do it later. Now it's the AND gate, which works kind of like the OR gate. It checks to see if the player has a game mode 1, and if it does, then it sends it to check to see if the second input has a game mode 1. And if it has 0, then it's just, it's done. It teleports you out of there, because the AND gates needs both inputs to be 1. So this is 1, and this is 1, so it should give me a 1. There you go. And if this were 0, 0. So that works. Oops. Uh, there we go. That works just like an AND gate. It's the same as, as if this were zero. Zero. And change that back. So there we go. This is an XOR gate. And XOR gates are always trickier to make, no matter what you're doing. Uh, with redstone or command blocks. Command blocks, it was particularly tricky. It uses the uh, multiplexer, and the multiplexer, unfortunately, is directional. See, the way this works is this has to be turned on before this when you step on this pressure plate. And if this block is on F equals, hold on, let me get this for you, F equals 2 or 0, then it works. But if it's on F equals 3 or 1, then it'll be triggered before the bottom one. And we can't have that because the way this works is, it, if this input is 1, it will come up here and step on this pressure plate and power this command block. But at almost the same time, it will teleport it away to the second input. So this cannot teleport it anywhere. If it's zero, then it just goes straight to the second input. 
and it does not step on this one. The reason is when you go when you come from the second input, it goes to this block. And this one is activated first, and if this one was already powered, then it won't activate. But if it is, then it will override this one and teleport it somewhere else. Like I think this one goes to here and this one goes to here. I don't remember. Doesn't really matter, but I'll show you how it works. So this will be input one. Read the chat box, input one, input two, output two. Now if I do input two first, input two, and then output one, it chooses which one. It's multiplexer. That's what it does. And now I use this to make the XOR gate to choose whether it should be the second input negated or the second input not negated. I don't know if there's a word for that. But let's do it. This is going to be zero. Um, that's not the right block. This is going to be one, so this will give a one. There you go. And if I were to change this to one, I get a zero. Like that. It's an XOR game. So I'll change this back. And this stuff down here at the end was me testing the directional properties. So, yeah, I'll just show you. This is an f equals 3 or something. It's updating like that when that's not what I wanted. But if it's the other way around, it does. So, since we have a full set of logic gates, somebody could use this to make a full adder out of only command blocks. Quite an interesting concept, isn't it? Uh, hey! What's this pressure plate do? I don't remember putting this here. Well, would you look at that? Yep, this appears to be a command block full adder. No redstone involved, just command blocks and pressure plates. Amazing, isn't it? This is the input system. It does use redstone torches and levers, but it doesn't need to. Uh, you could just enter it manually like I did back with the logic gates, but this is more user friendly. So let's test it out. 0 plus 1 equals 1. There you go, right in the chat box. 0, 1. Now let's do 1 plus 1. It should get 1, 0 for 2. There it is. Now let's add a carry-in. See, that's why this is a full adder. It can take carry-ins, and the second uh, binary digit is actually the carry-out. So you could link it up to more adders. I love that. That's so cool. Oop. Never actually pulled the lever. Well, now it should give us three. There it is. One, one. Three in binary code. And it works with all iterations. Do that. This will give us a one, zero one, and flip it back to zero zero, just like that. So that's pretty much the whole thing. It is capable of expanding to more bits. You would just have to reprogram all of these command blocks to teleport to the exact location where each of the other one is. Other ones are. Like, you would have to reprogram each and every one, because otherwise it will teleport you to wherever the place is in this adder. And I gotta tell you, it was a pain programming all of these by hand. Uh, it was uh, a lot of debugging, too, going through all of them. And, oh, let me show you something, because I have it right now. Um, game is when I set it to true. It tells me every place that it teleports me. And that's how I did debugging. I used all those teleporting things. So, just, I just thought it was, it gets in the way of the actual adder, so I turned it off. Like that. And so, that's about it. If you want to download it and play with it yourself, maybe try to copy it, make your own adder, because I know this can be improved. This isn't compact by any means, 
I have it all laid out so it was easy to work with, and my logic could probably be improved upon a little bit too. Even the logic gates I was working with uh, back there, they could be improved as well. So if you want to, uh, go ahead and download it, play with it a little bit. Uh, I think it's fun, although I don't think it's particularly useful, but it is not in this sense, not for an adder. Maybe other stuff. For other stuff it will be useful. But uh, I do think it's fun, and it was a challenge to make this, so I had a good time. If you want to download it yourself, the link is in the description. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.